Hello everyone, got a few dirty jokes for you today. So a man is sitting reading his newspaper when his wife sneaks up behind him and whacks him on the head with a frying pan. Jeez, woman, what the hell was that for? He says, that was for the piece of paper in your trouser pockets with the name Mary Ellen written on it. She replies, don't be daft, he explains. Two weeks ago when I went to the races, Mary Ellen was the name of one of the horses I bet on. She seems satisfied at this and apologizes and goes off to do work around the house. Three days later, he's again sitting in his chair, reading when she nails him with an even bigger frying pan, knocking him out cold. When he comes around, he says, what the hell was that for? Your damn horse phoned. <laughs> so the teacher returned to work after a brief hiatus having taken some time off due to stress induced by her recent encounter with little Johnny's unique word descriptions. Determined to regain control of the class, she decided to introduce a new word in a way that would leave no room for misinterpretation. With newfound spirit, she addressed the class, All right, can someone provide a sentence using the word exceptional? Little Johnny, notorious for his mischievous wit, deliberately kept his hand down. The teacher couldn't help but feel a sense of triumph, thinking, he's thinking, I've beaten him this time. She then called on Susan, who eagerly raised her hand. Well, miss, Susan began confidently, the weatherman said this spring will be exceptionally cold. The teacher, though appreciating the effort, corrected with a smirk. Good try, Susan. But that's the word exceptionally, not exceptional. Stuart, how have you heard the word exceptional used? To her dismay, Johnny's hand shot up. Okay, Stuart, enlighten us, she said, emphasizing the word exceptional with a hint of dread. Miss, Stuart hesitated. You said that no one can have time off except if they are sick. Sorry. Stuart, that's completely wrong. Think it through, the teacher replied, beginning to panic. She scanned the room, realizing with a sinking feeling that Johnny's hand was the only one raised. All right, Johnny, spell it out for us. How do you see the word exceptional being used? She demanded, barking out the letters one by one, grinning mischievously. Little Johnny began, I overheard my sister talking to her friend the day before Valentine's Day. They were discussing my sister's new boyfriend and how he had promised to get her a big bottle of smelly stuff tomorrow. She said, if it was anything except Chanel, he wasn't getting in her knickers. <laughs> so after their baby was born, the panicked father went to see the obstetrician. Doctor, the man said. I don't mind telling you, but I'm a little upset because my daughter has red hair. She can't possibly be mine. Nonsense, the doctor said. Even though you and your wife both have black hair, one of your ancestors may have contributed red hair to the gene pool. It isn't possible, the man insisted. This can't be. Our families on both sides had jet black hair for generations. Well, said the doctor. Let me ask you this. How often do you make love? The man seemed a bit ashamed. I've been working very hard for the past year. We only made love once or twice every few months. Well, there you have it, the doctor said confidently. It's rust. <laughs> so a man comes home at three o'clock in the morning removes his shoes downstairs and goes upstairs, carefully avoiding the creaking steps of the staircase. Once in the sleeping room, he sits down quietly on his side of the bed and begins to remove his socks. Just when he attempts to remove the second sock, his wife jumps up and furiously snaps. And now I would like to know which establishments are still open at three in the morning. The man starts putting his socks back on and says, I'll check this out immediately, darling. <laughs> so
So, Sister Bernadette lived in a convent a few hundred yards from Wayne's liquor store. One day, she went in and asked Wayne for a bottle of brandy. He said, I'm sorry, Sister Bernadette. I can't sell brandy to a nun. But it's for the Mother Superior, she explained. It helps with her constipation. Hearing this, Wayne relented and sold her the brandy. On his way home that night, he saw Sister Bernadette staggering drunkenly along the road. Sister Bernadette, he exclaimed, shame on you. You told me the brandy was for the Mother Superior constipation. And so it is, said Sister Bernadette. When she sees the state I'm in, she's going to shit herself. <laughs> so one day, John is walking along the road when he bumps into Jim, who he went to school with. Jim is richly dressed and standing next to a brand new car. John remembers that Jim was never too bright in school, so he wonders how come he seems to be doing so well. Jim says, Well, I recently opened a jewelry store in town and last month I opened two down south. John is confused and asks, you opened three jewelry stores in two months. How? With a crowbar. <laughs> so three guys are golfing with the club pro. First guy tees off and hits a dibbler, 60 yards. He turns to the pro and asked, what did I do wrong? Loft, replied the pro. The next guy tees off and hits a duck hook into the woods. He asked, what did I do wrong? The pro replied Luft. The third guy tees off and hits a slice into the pond. He also turned to the pro and asked, What did I do wrong? Again, the answer came back, Luft. As they were all walking down the fairway towards their balls, the first guy decided to speak up. The three of us all hit different shots. And when we asked what we had done wrong, on each occasion you gave exactly the same reply. What is loft? The pro replied, lack of freaking talent. <laughs> so, there was this little guy sitting in a bar, drinking his beer, minding his own business, when all of a sudden this great big fella comes in and knocks him off the bar stool and onto the floor. The big fella says, that was a karate chop from Korea. The little guy gets back up on the stool and starts drinking again, when all of a sudden the big fella knocks him down again and says, that was a judo chop from Japan. So the little guy has had enough of this. He gets up, brushes himself off and quietly leaves. The little guy is gone for an hour or so when he returned. Without saying a word, he walks up behind the big fella and knocks the big fella off his stool, knocking him out cold. The little guy looks at the bartender and says, when he gets up, tell him that's a crowbar from Walmart. <laughs>